Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the York series. Sitting within North Yorkshire, York is a very historic place with 31 civil parishes within its city boundaries. Here's one of them for your enjoyment. Welcome back to the City of York people. Although in this episode, we will be touching both York and the East Riding as well. And that's because this village is on the border between the two. The border is the River Derwent, which you might be able to see just in shot to the right there. This bridge crosses the Derwent. It's the old bridge across the Derwent actually, because these days there is a newer road bridge which carries the road between York and the East Riding. Welcome to Kexby. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to Kexby, which stands on the eastern edge of the city of York on the A1079, a former turnpike road between York and Hull. Kexby is also located on the River Derwent and was an important crossing point on the river. It has, since the early 1400s, had a bridge that spanned the water here, although records do show there was also a ferry which operated as well. The current bridge over the river dates from the 1960s, but there is still an old bridge here. It's not the 1400s original, but it can still trace its origins back to 1650. It features a coat of arms, that of the Outred family, who were once lords of the manor. Kexby has seen a lot of changes over the centuries. Perhaps the biggest one would be that it used to be wholly within the East Riding of Yorkshire. A very small part of it still is, but via the district of Selby, it ended up mostly within York in 1996. It once had a chapel dedicated to St Mary, which was replaced with St Paul's Church. Kexby also once had a school and two halls, one new and one old, which have both been demolished. Its amenities are limited, but there's a massive care home complex, if nothing else. And Kexby Parish is much bigger than the village. It extends out to the hamlet of Scorby, which also used to be in the East Riding. It's a small, strung out village located within a vast expanse of farmland. Let's see what it's like. We start on the western bank of the River Derwent on part of the old turnpike road between Hull and York. Our first landmark is some allotments. Directly opposite these we have two 18th century buildings, an old dovecote which is now residential and the former Coach and Horses Inn which is now Manor Farm. This is Kexby Old Bridge which carries the old turnpike road over the River Derwent. There's been a bridge here since the 1420s, but this current structure was built by Sir Roger Treasurer in 1650. Although part of Kexby Village, this old derelict and abandoned house on the other side is actually in the East Riding. A new bridge, which we're now stood on, replaced the old one in the 1960s. The old bridge has undergone some major work recently to stabilise it, but it will never reopen to vehicles. And as you can see, once back over the river, we're re-entering the city of York. Kexby used to be wholly within the East Riding until 1974. So once over the bridge and into York properly, the first major landmark is that that's behind me. That 
is the Riverside Care Complex Derwent House and Riverview Lodge. We'll talk a bit about that next. So this is the A1079, the modern road which crosses the Derwent and bypasses the village. Upon it we have the Riverside Care Complex. Operated by Shaw Healthcare, Derwent House and Riverview Lodge combine to offer residential care for the elderly. There's a massive 63 rooms between them. Continuing up the road towards York, next we have an old schoolhouse. A school in Kexby was begun in 1831 and it had 37 children in 1832. This schoolhouse is an 1858 rebuild of the original. It lasted until 1905 and its children then transferred to either Dunnington or Wilberfoss. It became a private house in 1973. The bus stop opposite still uses the name Old Schoolhouse. If you need a bus out to Kexby, your magic numbers are the X46 and X47 East Riders. And also directly opposite the school you find a gravel drive that leads to some more of the village. This includes Kexby's church, dedicated to St Paul. Now the other day when I was in West Lindsay I visited a church which on the map still showed as being an active church. It wasn't, it's a private property now. I don't know whether this is the same case here because as you can see this church has a car in the drive which would be a very unusual thing for an active church. But uh, regardless whether it's active or not, that is the church here in Kexby and we're going to talk about it. I was absolutely right, this is no longer an active church. St Paul's was built in 1853 and was designed by F.C. Penrose for the second Lord Wenlock, whose father owned considerable land in the area. It's now been converted to a residential property, so it's close to the public, although there is still public access to its graveyard. At the end of the gravel drive there's the old vicarage, which is just as impressive a building as the church itself. St Paul's is built in the early decorated style. It replaced a lost medieval chapel which was dedicated to St Mary and features lots of interesting architectural detail, including an octagonal bell tower. It's grade 2 listed. The remainder of the village is made up of a housing estate off the A1079, Old Hall Lane and the Crescent. The Old Hall to which the street name refers was a manor house and was the seat of the Outrad family. Kexby also had a new hall near the river. Both had been demolished by 1850 and traces of a moat remain at the old one. Now on the walk back to the car we pass the parish notice board. Now notice how it's not just Kexby Parish Council, it's Kexby and Scorby. Now the reason, or one of the reasons, that Kexby's boundaries are so large is because to the north there's a whole expanse of land which belongs to Scorby, which used to be part of the East Riding. Now the problem with it is I can't access it because most of it is private land, the road leaving leading up to it is private as well. So for this episode's special section you're going to get a bit about Scorby. Scorby is a bit of a weird place and I mean that in a nice way honestly. It was once linked to the parish of Catton in the East Riding but is now firmly within York. The modern settlement is only accessible via private roads from both the A1079 in the south and the A166 from Stamford Bridge in the north. Scorby was once much bigger, it's occupied a similar riverside situation to Kexby, just over a mile to the north. Both were originally Scandinavian settlements. Although now mostly depopulated, it would be unfair to call it deserted. All that really remains though is a handful of scattered, isolated farms. It's not known when and in what circumstances the village was depopulated, but sources say the open fields around it may have been converted to pasture by as early as the 16th century. Quite a lot of land in both Kexby and Scorby was either pasture or woodland in the 19th and 20th centuries. And we're back to Dovecote Cottage and the Manor House where we began just opposite the allotment and that has been the parish of Kexby, one of the smallest ones in York in terms of population and size of the actual village but in terms of area it's a massive one, it covers a, quite a lot of land but most of it we can't get to unfortunately. And there you go, there you have it. 
time for me to move on to my next one here in York. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.